Yeah. So the option is either your message is right and mine is wrong, or my message is right and yours is wrong. Fair enough? How, how do we know which one is right or wrong? That's a great question. That is, it's a very difficult question to answer. That's okay. I think one of the things you can do is look at the lives of the, uh, the, the founder of the religion. Okay. In your case, it would be Muhammad. Yeah. In my case, Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, that's a weird sound, but yeah. No problem. But yeah, um, so, if I look at these two characters, Yeah. you know, from, the, from our own scriptures, yeah. Uh, your scriptures, quite you know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I know he's portrayed as the greatest man. Yeah. By many Muslims, you wouldn't think that. Yeah. But the hadiths have always been shrouded in a little bit of a mystery. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but there, there's been some revelations in recent years. The more as as, as Islam has been exposed yeah. to the, you know, the same level of meticulous as the Bible, for instance. Yeah. Because the Bible really is like it's very similar in the fact that you've got the words of Christ. Yeah. Then they're out of context. Then you've got the epistles yeah. that describe how to live a Christian, which is a bit like in Islam. You have the Quran, yeah. which is the word of God. You've got like the, the Hadith, which is like put it into context if you like. Yeah. And then you've got the tafsir which describes how to Yeah, well scholars writing what this verse means yeah, and yeah, what yeah. this yeah. So you have all that within yeah. the, the Christian Bible. Yeah. In one book you could say. Yeah. Like all by, by obviously different people. So I think when you like examine the hadiths and some of the things that Muhammad got up to, uh -huh. for instance Marion, I know this is I'm no going problem, straight no to problem. the juggler here. No I'm not, problem, I'm not no problem. Too, it's just no problem. The thing yeah. first that comes to mind, for instance, yeah. Marion, Aisha. Aisha, yeah. Yeah, and the Aisha. Uh, is that wrong biblically? Well, yes, 100%. Yeah, you can't marry children, come on. Okay. It's sexual morality. Okay. Where do the, what's, the, what's the age of marriage in the Bible? It doesn't give an age, but okay. there is sexual morality. Okay. In the Bible. It says, like, in. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you define as a child? A woman. As, I, uh, I mean, like the modern, modern, modern age would say 18 years old or 16 years old. Yeah, so I definitely wouldn't say it's nine years old, put it that way. Okay, yeah. but what would you define that as? Uh, I'd say uh, an adult, well, these days he's 18, yeah? Uh -huh. Back in the past, it was probably younger, 16, yeah. Yeah. that sort of age. Yeah. yeah. So maybe 15, 16 back in them days, 14 perhaps. Okay. I don't think it's just when you have to start having your menstrual cycle. Just trying to work out. Some some people you don't some, think some, some or, children. Huh? Yeah. You don't think or you're yeah, I think. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Like like if, if the Bible is a complete book of guidance for all your life, shouldn't it tell you when people should marry, when they shouldn't marry? Or does it or does it does it does it change according to time and place? Well would you would the, the Bible is a book of covenants, right? Uh -huh. So the Abrahamic covenant yeah. was not written down. Okay. The covenant that God had prior to Abraham, at the time of Noah, for instance, yeah. there was no written court code of law. It was on our kind of hearts. Well, Gen well, the book of Genesis doesn't cover the covenant of Abraham and Noah. The book of Genesis is written by Moses. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Long after. But it's also uh -huh. a narrative. And so it describes yeah. what was happening at the time of Noah, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, so just a, just a few things. So you said the, the, the thing which we can use to uh, distinguish the truth and the false is you mentioned the lives of the founders. So comparing the life of Muhammad وسلم, with Jesus. وسلم. But now you're bring, also you're bringing up the, book, the issue of the books. But, no, no problem, no problem, no problem, no problem, no problem. But I would say there's something uh, before that as well. I mean, we, we can discuss these, but the issue of the central message. Like the, the central message of Islam is that there's one God. He alone deserves to be worshipped and we worship him alone. And we, and we would say that this is the, the message of Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus himself. And obviously, the last messenger. Oh, we believe the last the messenger, book, Muhammad, book, peace be upon all of them. Whereas, when you talk about the concept of God, the Trinity, I would say that this is the first thing we need to compare. 
Why? Why did you come to that today? Because this is the, the central foundation on who is God, the one who created us, uh, and how do we know him and how do we worship him. So this will be the central thing, because I would say the Abraham and Moses, Noah, even Jesus himself, they never knew of any trinity, they never called to any trinity. Rather, this is something which the, the church con concluded about 300 years after Jesus was taken up. You, you can say that um, how we know the truth yeah? Yeah. is looking at the concept of God, yeah. which is a very complex, complex subject. Uh, how can we fathom God, number one, right? Uh. But the person that is delivering the message about yeah. God, yeah. It's also very important, okay? Yeah, of course. And but what's more and, important, and the message or the messenger? Um, Surely it's the message. Well, I don't know, because if, if, for instance, if someone's a fraudster, uh -huh. uh, or someone who's, um, you know, not morally upright, yeah. He's, yeah. he's telling you something uh -huh. about the nature of God, for yeah. instance, more inclined not to believe him because of the type of character he is. So where did Jesus tell you about the Trinity? Well, where did Jesus tell us about the Trinity? Yeah. Um, well, we believe that Jesus not only talks um, through uh, him, him talking, but also the Holy Spirit talks. Uh, yeah. Okay, so where did and the so Holy Spirit teach about the, the Trinity? The Trinity yeah. comes from not just Jesus, who yeah. is the, the one part of the Trinity, but also the other parts of the Bible that lead us to the to understanding that God has revealed himself to mankind yeah. in three ways. Through but, but did Jesus teach this? So Jesus taught to us. I mean, it's, it's the central message. What is the central message of Jesus Christ? The central message of Jesus Christ is that he's paid our price for sins. And that he's he's revealed God to humankind. Okay, so when you say he's re revealed God, you're referring like for, for example. Well, I've noticed that you've changed yeah. the subject now. From, no, 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 because this is you're going, you're going to yeah. the Trinity. I understand it's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's, it's the yeah. about, uh, perhaps a weakness in the Christian theology, but but it's, it's the mo it's the foundation. It's the most important thing because, for example, uh, Noah he was sent to call mankind to the worship of God. Abraham was sent to call mankind to the worship of God. Moses was sent. We believe all the messengers, like the Quran is very clear. The Quran mentions in uh, chapter 16, verse 36, it mentions, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَ فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولٍ عَنِ اِعْبُدُ اللَّهِ وَجْتَنِ بِالتَّابُوتِ It said that in every, every nation, in every people, we sent a messenger. I'm going, to ask, I'm, going to, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay, let me, let me finish this point. It says that we sent in every... We sent in every nation a messenger calling the people to worship the one true God alone and to avoid and to stay away from all false worship. So because this is the central message, it should be very, it should be very clear. Like the Quran mentions in uh, chapter two. The, the Quran is not that clear. Uh -huh. For instance, the Quran, the Quran uh -huh. has a lot of abrogation. Uh -huh. For instance, we call to worship God, but yeah. <coughs> for instance, no, but, uh, no, but God, no, look, look, one point at a time. Because the thing is, Christianity, the whole of Christianity, is built on abrogation, isn't it? No, it's not. So, G so you don't you don't believe that you don't believe that the law of Moses abrogated by Jesus or fulfilled? You call it? Yeah. So, it so you don't have to follow it anymore. That's right. That's so that's an abrogation. Yeah. But so that's an abrogation. Yeah. But we. But but the the central thing about the wonders the wonders of God the wonders of God. Let me answer. Let me answer. Yeah. So you said the Quran is very clear. Yes. Right. And. It's not, it's not, it's not clear to someone who doesn't understand the it. Is clear. Yeah. The Bible oh. takes some work. Right? Yeah. And it is difficult to understand the concept of God because he's unfathomable. Yeah. The way to say I know exactly what God is like uh -huh. is, is quite impossible. No, yeah. no, no, no. But, but I can say uh, that God yeah. has revealed himself to mankind. And if I show you the Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, yeah. Yeah, this is where part where Jesus reveals that uh -huh. in nature of the Trinity to uh, mankind, uh, where he says, all authority in heaven and on earth has uh, been given to me. Uh, yeah? This is his actual words. Yeah. yeah. And he said, he us can, can authority be given to God? Yeah. Can authority be given to God? Well, yes. 
In this state, it has been. Yes. Okay. See, the thing is, without moving away from the point, the first thing is to understand, when I'm saying the, the Qur'an is very clear, for us it's very clear, but this point that God is one and worship Him alone, because this is the message of all the messengers, and this is the first thing we're going to be asked about on the Day of Judgment, about the worship of God alone. And the greatest sin is to worship other than God. Like Moses, it's reported in the Bible, he says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Jesus also repeated the same thing in the book of Matthew. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. So this is very clear. If you look at the Gospel according to John, uh, chapter 17, verse 3, Jesus is reported to have said that this is a life eternal, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So here, Jesus is saying that to have eternal life is to recognize that there's only one true God, and that one true God is the one who sent Jesus Christ. So my point, I mean, we can discuss all the issues of abrogation and things in the Quran which you don't find clear, or things in Hadith which you don't, uh, you're not comfortable with or you don't agree with, but the central message that God is one, this should be clear. And when you say that God is a trinity, this should be clear as well. But when you okay. say that right. Jesus says, that when Jesus says that authority has been given to me, authority can never be given to God because he's, he is always, he's eternal in his names and attributes. He's always the almighty, he always has authority. So when you say that God gave authority, straight away that's telling you that that person who received the authority is not God. Okay. All right. So in answer to that, I would say that um, it's, it's very, very difficult to understand the concept of the Trinity. That's true, right? Who says it has to be easy? I don't know. Right, you, you well, first demonstrate it. it. You, you Show where it. Jesus taught it, then, then explain it. Okay, all right. So where does Jesus teach the Trinity? Do think about that. That God is, is three persons, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and these three are one in nature and they're all co-equal and co-eternal. That's, that's, the, that's the official definition of the church, Orthodox Church for the Trinity. So you so, should say that so, Jesus so, taught it. So I should say that Jesus taught that, yeah? Yeah. I right. mean, you, do you believe Jesus taught that? Well, I believe that Jesus reveals God to mankind because he is the Son of God and that he, 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 he essentially he shares the same uh, so, so, we God. Did, so we did teach yeah. it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. can you show me where he so, taught it? I'll, I'll show, hold on, let me just explain to you what my belief is, yeah? So, Jesus came to reveal himself uh, to mankind. Uh, that God revealed himself to mankind through Jesus. Yeah. So, he says, for instance, in one of his parables, that yeah. he sent, God sent many... Oh, 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 sorry. Yeah. So, God sent many prophets yeah. throughout yeah. the generations. And in the last days, he sent his, his son. Surely they listened to him. Yeah. So, this, this distinguishes from the prophets. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Open that people would listen to him. Yeah. 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 Uh, the son shares the same. Um, the same consciousness, the same makeup as the father. Yeah. A bit like uh, you might look, like, you might have ginger hair like your dad did or uh -huh. your mum did, yeah. yeah. Same shorts and jeans, same little DNA, yeah. <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So Jesus says, the, "I and my father are one." Yeah. Uh, yes. So uh, they're equal. Yeah. yeah. So that's another, that's another place where he says that. They share the same purpose. DNA yeah. as, as God. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't go around saying, I'm God, in, worship me. Uh -huh. God, worship me. Uh -huh. my, my question is, did he teach the no, Trinity? No, no. Right, your question is so fair one. I mean, it's a simple, it's a simple thing. It should be straightforward. But three persons, one's God. Yeah. Because if our salvation depends upon knowing God, God and knowing him. Yeah. It depends on, our salvation free. depends on us accepting Jesus Christ as what he said. I'm not God of the well, forgiveness of sin is comes through Jesus Christ yeah. yeah. and pays the price for our sins. That, that, uh, it doesn't uh, uh, so you don't, have to believe, you don't have to believe in the Trinity then, to be saved? Well, I think the Bible leads us to that belief, right? But you don't have to. you understand it fully, you're not, not understand it, not understand it. Because no one can understand it. No one can understand it. But I mean, I think it's not... So, so you're saying that a person, if they believe Jesus died for their sins, but they don't know that Jesus was God, or they don't know the Trinity, they can still be saved? 
Well, G said the work is this, yeah, to believe in the one who God sent. Yeah, that's the yeah. work of God. Yeah? yeah. So basically, having faith in Jesus who, Christ is important. So important. Jesus said you have to believe in the one that God sent. Yes. But that, but the, even that statement there, the one that God sent, would tell you that Jesus is not God, Why? because God sent him. Yeah. But the thing is, we know that Jesus did he, Christ did he send Jesus, himself? Jesus Christ, yeah, essentially, because Jesus Christ. Is so the, God sent himself. Je, hold on, just yeah. Me. yeah. Je, the, Jesus Christ is described as the incarnation of God. Right? Uh -huh. So, carne is the Latin word for flesh. Right? Okay the enfleshment of God. So, in a way, he's been sent. Right? And the word became flesh. Yes, yeah, exactly. Chapter, John chapter 1. So, and, and just, just in, stick in to the, it. So, the, so the, the flesh of Jesus was God. Hold on, hold on. In the Old Testament. Like, as in what, what the, on, what on, the disciples on. saw, what they hold touched on, was, on, the flesh on. was God. Hold on, hold on. In the yeah. Old Testament, yeah. God makes a promise to, to the sons and children of Israel. Yeah. That, um, that he himself will save them. Yeah. Uh -huh. in, in, Prophet Isaiah says that uh, he's going to send the Prince of Peace, God of um, Isaiah 6 9, isn't it? No, Isaiah, 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 I think it's Isaiah 9. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be back in a sec, one sec. No problem, sir. Yeah, yeah. Shall we continue, sir? Yeah, Isaiah, Isaiah chapter. Let me get my Bible there. Okay. Nice talking to you. Yeah, anytime you're passing, fine. Sing Father, the Prince of Peace. Yeah. What verse was that again? Uh, Isaiah 9 6. Yeah. Shall I read it again? For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Okay. The Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. So you're saying this verse is referring to Jesus? Who do you think it refers to? Is, he, is Jesus the Everlasting Father? Well, I think he's got that title, yeah. From Where? This, from, from this passage. Where? From this passage. No, you can't say that this is a prophecy about Jesus and say because Jesus is the everlasting Father when he's not the everlasting Father. Okay. Like, the verse doesn't, it, the verse doesn't uh, fit Jesus because according to your belief, there's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The so and these are separate, but they're all one. So you can't you can't use a verse saying that the everlasting Father is talking about Jesus. Okay. Right. This is this is heresy. Do you reckon? Yeah. Look it up. But my point is still that all the messengers taught that God is one, and He alone deserves to be worshipped. None of them taught the Trinity. But Christians believe God is one. It's just that there's it's a oneness comprised of three elements. Trinity is tri it's like a, tri unity. It's, it's like yeah. um, it's like a house being made of many bricks. It's still one house. You know what I mean? Okay, but all all of the separate bricks are they all the house? Yes. Are they not? Okay. So if you have all the parts, are, so basically you're saying that the if you use this example, are you saying each of the bricks individually is a house? No. You're saying it's part of the house. Don't forget. Okay. Don't forget. So I'm, if, I'm, I'm if, saying, if you put this back on the Trinity, are you saying that the the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are not fully God? They're parts of God. No, I'm not saying that. Yeah, it's a heresy. So you, you can't give any example John to explain Lennon. the Trinity. No. But is that a bad John thing? Lennon. Yes, because the Lord, according to the Bible, the Lord is not the Lord of confusion. So the central message. But it's this, not confusion, really. It's this, just that it's just incomprehensible. The, the central message. If it's not found in, uh, in clear verses, if Jesus never taught it, and then you have the Quran which has come and said that Jesus never taught this, the Bible shows that Moses never taught this, Abraham never taught this, and you're saying that this is your fundamental belief, then this is, of course this is a problem. So, Jesus never taught it, right? Yeah. Jesus definitely claimed things of God that only God should... should uh, yeah, but you should be able to demonstrate it. Yeah, he, he, he yeah. definitely claimed things of God that only God should claim. Yeah? Do you but, agree but, with that? But you're saying he was given authority by God. Yes, God, yes, God, yes. God, the nature of God, he cannot be given authority by anyone. Okay. Of my own, like, according to the Bible, of my own self, I can do nothing. Whatever miracles Jesus performed, he said, of my own self, I can do nothing. God gave him the power to show the miracles. That shows that he's not God. Okay. The, the verse I gave you was very clear. That Eternal life, this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, 
and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Thus, thus, this we accept it because it agrees with the Quran. The Quran is very clear. Jesus said, Inna Allah Rabbi wa Rabbukum hada siratu mustaqim. Jesus said that verily Allah is my Lord and He's your Lord. So worship Him. This is the straight path. So this is basically the, the central message which we're calling to, to worship God alone. And this is all the messengers call to this. No one called to the Trinity. To the, the thing is, if you're resting your salvation on believing that God is a Trinity, but it's not in your book, none of the, none of the prophets taught it, then you're doomed. Jesus alludes the fact that he has qualities of God that only that only uh, God should have. For uh -huh. instance, he forgave sins. Yeah? But Jesus gave that authority to the disciples to forgive sins also. Show me. I will, it will take me some time, I can't remember the reference. Uh, but Jesus, he gave authority for, to the disciples to forgive sins. Jesus also said about the disciples that I and the Father are one and you are also one in the Father. That doesn't make the disciples God, but Jesus gave the... Um, let me just see if I can find it. The problem is, is you get bad reception. So, what, what Jesus does is that he gives... When he, when he uh -huh. um, sends his apostles... Yeah. Okay, he says, whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Yeah? Uh -huh. And he gives them the uh, authority to preach the gospel. Yeah. And when Peter preaches, he says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the forgiveness of your sins. So Peter was given the keys to the kingdom of God, as Jesus uh -huh. said. So when, when Jesus said, uh, when Peter said, who do you say I am? He says, you are Christ. The Messiah. Yeah, the Messiah, right? Yeah, we don't, we, we don't, have, a goes, with, we don't God, have a problem with Jesus being God the Messiah. God has revealed that to you, Peter. Right? Yeah. And you're going to be given the keys to, to the church. Yeah. So when Peter preaches the first sermon in the day of Pentecost, he says, repent and be baptized, everyone, for the forgiveness of your sins. Yeah. So he kind of preaches the, the, the forgiveness of Kind sins. of. Uh, sorry? Uh, here it is, John 20. Okay, so in John 20, 23, the disciples, the disi uh, it's also in Matthew 6, let me see, let me find the exact verse. Uh, John 20, 23. But the thing is, Jesus himself, he had a God, yes? And he worshipped God. And he was sent by so God. This is, so this is a yeah. verse that helps you understand this concept. Because it is a difficult concept. I'm not denying that, right? But it's, I expect it to be difficult because God is a difficult concept to understand. He's unfathomable. Yeah? Why? Why is God unfathomable? Can you, do you know what God's... Uh -huh. do, you know, do you understand God, would you say? See, there's a thing of comprehending God fully. No human being can comprehend That's God fully. But to know who God is, then all mankind can know God. All mankind can have a relationship with God. When you say that God is one, it's simple to understand. When you say that God is almighty, we understand what almighty means. To comprehend the might, then it's, it's beyond us. But, but to say that we worship God who is almighty, all-knowing, and he alone deserves to be worshipped, this is a simple concept. Yeah, but this is something that Christians believe. But we believe. But you that, believe in a Trinity. But we also. But believe, Jesus never taught it. Hold on, can I yeah. Finish? yeah. We believe that God is one. Yeah. We're talking, we believe that there's one God, and that God doesn't give His glory to another. Right? But, but, uh, hold on. What does finish. one mean? Let me finish. Yeah. yeah. I mean, God. One can mean various things, can't, can't it? Yeah. Like, if me, me and um, me and my wife, he says that you know the Bible, the two become one. Yeah. Yeah. The two becomes one. So. One doesn't necessarily mean just one, it could mean a, like a unity uh -huh. yeah, that forms one. Uh -huh. right? So, you know, it is hard to understand the concept of Trinity. I'm not saying it's like yeah. a, an easy concept to understand. 
But the Bible leads us to this. Where? Where? All over. In fact, uh, that you can't Jesus just say. Christ, give, give me an example. Give me a verse which leads you to the Trinity. Okay. Um, because the verse I gave you, like the, the Quran is very clear. The, the Quran mentioned that Jesus said, uh, look at, uh, the Quran mentioned, Look at Kafir al Ladina Kalu in the Lahu Masihu bin Maria. I don't speak out very so No, no problem. Point, no, point no problem. No point and then it mentions, Wakali Isa, let me find the verse. It mentions, Look at Kafir al Ladina Kalu in the Lahu Masihu bin Maria. Wakali Masihu Yabani Israel, but Allah Rabbi were up with him. وما يشرك بالله فقد حرم الله عليه الجنة ومأواهم دا وما للظالمين من أنصار. It mentions. Let me find the translation. So that that's pointless to mention Arabic because you know, I don't understand it. Well, it's fine, but because our book is preserved in the original language, so we, the, whatever is English is not the Quran. The English is just the translation of the Quran. So what you're about to read me is not the Quran. Uh, it's a translation of the Quran, the so English meaning of the Quran. If it's not uh -huh. readable, why, why read it in English? It doesn't make sense, does it? Do you understand Arabic? No. So it's for all mankind. Let's um, see. But if it's in Arabic and not in uh -huh. English, not the Quran, it doesn't make sense. Let's we'll see. Let's find the verse. In the Masjid, yeah? So where does, where does the Bible lead us towards that fact that God is made up of the Holy Spirit, God is made up of Christ, God is made up of God the Father? It's all over, it's literally all over. Okay, so show me then. Alright, so Matthew chapter 1. You guys go. My phone's dead, so I haven't got Oh, no problem. You can use mine if you want. Matthew chapter 1. Let me just find, find the verse I mentioned. Matthew uh, chapter 1. Is it here disbelief he says Jesus is one of three or something like this? Yes, this verse. Anthony all all times quotes that verse. He says no. He says I think there is disbelief, but Jesus never said that. So um so, yeah, the birth of Jesus Christ was, was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child, the Holy Ghost. And Joseph, her husband, being a just man, uh -huh. and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. While he thought of these things, behold, mm -hmm. the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, mm -hmm. that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt name him Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled and spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, Virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and shall call him Emmanuel, which means, which, sorry, which being interpreted is God with us. Okay, we can come to that, but this is the translation of the verse. It mentions, sorry, I took so long to find it. Where's this again, sorry? This is what I read in Arabic. Uh, they have certainly disbelieved, you say, Allah is the Messiah, the son of Mary. While the Messiah has said, O children of Israel, Worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord. Indeed, he who associates others with Allah, Allah has forbidden for him paradise, and his refuge is the fire, and there are not for the wrongdoers any helpers. So the message of Jesus is very clear, that God is one, worship him alone. And he told his people this, and he said that if anyone makes partners with God, then this person, the, the paradise is forbidden for them, and they'll be in the hellfire forever. Okay, so we come back to my point now. Yeah. This is according to Muhammad, right? Yes. The only person... No, this is according to Allah, who, who sent oh, down no, the Quran Muhammad upon him. is the one yeah. that yeah. spoke, speaking on behalf of Allah. Yeah? Yes. So, so we only have Muhammad's word that this came from some angel Gabriel, yeah? Yes. Right? Not even Allah, from angel Gabriel. Uh -huh. Right? So, we have, to, we have to verify that that is the true message of Jesus Christ, as opposed to what the Bible says, okay. right? which is like, yeah. Yeah. that leads us to this 
this form, no, no. this picture of God, that hold on, that wouldn't make sense. He's, he's revealed to himself as the Holy Ghost. He's revealed to himself as God the Father. Then we've got this other this character. But you God. haven't even shown that in the Bible yet. Uh, well, well, yeah. This is what I'm saying, though, right? Yeah. So he revealed to himself as God the Father, the Holy Ghost, and yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's Where has he revealed that? Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Right. So you're saying that yeah. 600 years afterwards, right? Yeah. After God deceived people by putting Jesus up on the cross or whatever. Deceived that, people? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. They're not making it look like someone else was on the cross? No, but, no. Like Jesus on the cross? No. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. Well, it's another story. Right? Uh -huh. So 600 years later, this man's saying, saying contrary to what the Bible says, yeah? So we uh -huh. have to take his word for it, right? Yeah. And try and form a picture of God that he's, he's yeah. saying that we should have, right? What, the God is one? Yeah. Is that is that not yeah. consistent with the teachings of oh, all no, the previous messages? But it's messages? not just that yeah. God is one. Is that, not, that, consist is that not consistent not, with the Bible? Just, just, I mean, this is, a, is that not consistent with the Bible? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. not just that God is one, is it? Yeah. God is one doesn't paint a picture of God. Yeah? Uh -huh. God is many things. God is all loving. God yeah. is all knowing. God yeah. is all powerful. God is kind. God, uh, yeah, the Quran teaches you know, that. You know I mean? yeah. It's yeah. just a whole, like, who is God? Yeah. You know, he's outside time. Uh -huh. you know, he's a spirit. You know uh -huh. what I mean? He fills the universe. You know what I mean? He's in, he, he reads our minds. But, like your, God, your, your God, God, yeah, he's, but your point is he's a trinity. God is not just like... But your point just, is he's a trinity. On, on, yeah. God is not just this, this one. Yeah. yeah. There's a whole character, a person yeah. there, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. we have to get to know. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not just one. No, I mean, I mean it's, the, it's, the, Quran it's, it's the Quran is very clear. The Quran is very clear. The Quran is very clear. It describes Allah, the most merciful, the most kind, the all-knowing, the all-wise. All this is mentioned in the Quran. Yeah. And this is consistent with the message of all the messengers. But the issue is, the Trinity is not taught in the Bible. Jesus never taught it. Well, the word Trinity doesn't pay in the Bible, but there's this concept of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, it's the Holy Spirit. Spanish. According to according to the, the Jews, according to those who had the Old Testament, Ruh al Qudus. This is 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 from the power of God. It's not it's not a separate person. They never understood it as a separate person. Like for example, when you say the mercy of God, when you say the knowledge of God, when you say the power of God, when you say the spirit of God. It's not a separate person. It's not a so It's not like. A, yeah, Hold on, yeah. God being powerful. Yeah. Is different to God being a spirit. Uh huh. But what is it? That, that's not what the same. You, that's a different. But the problem is what that's a different you, topic. Okay, but if you could just stick to the point of demonstrating the no, Trinity no, no, from no, the no, Bible. No, 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 no. This isn't on the Trinity. Uh -huh. This yeah. is. I'm asking you. So is God a spirit? Is God? Is the Holy Spirit God? Because you're you're adamant that Christ uh -huh. is not there. Uh -huh. God. Right. No, I, I told you when the, when the Jews, when they understood the word Holy Spirit, they never made it a separate person. So you're referring to the Jews yeah. for your theology now, yeah? I'm talking about the people who, who the, the Old Testament was given to. Oh, no, yeah. no. You're referring, so you're uh -huh. referring to the Jewish concept yeah. of God now, yeah? Uh -huh. For your theology? No. So why are you referring to them? You asked, because you're referring to the Bible when it refers to the Holy Spirit. No, no, I'm asking and you, yeah, yeah. is the Holy Spirit God? No, not according to the Quran. But you're you're talking about the Bible. No, no, I'm, talk, I'm asking yeah. you. So uh -huh. you don't think the Holy Spirit is God? No, according to the Bible. No, uh, no, not according to the Bible. According to Quran. Okay. The, the point is still where, here. Where's the Holy Spirit in the Quran? Uh, it's mentioned in many verses. But the well, point where, is, where, where is it? Though? I'll come to you. But the point is, can you demonstrate that Jesus called to a Trinity? Just yes or so, no? Well, Jesus yeah. demonstrates yeah. the Trinity because he demonstrates okay. that he is God. Can you show me there? Yeah. Where? Like I said, he forgave sins. Yeah. But the disciples also forgave sins. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And right. they were given authority by Jesus to forgive sins in John 20, 23. Okay. So yeah. he, right. This is what I think, right? Yeah. Jesus forgave sins, right? This, um, he made claims that yeah. refer to the Old Testament God for himself. Like I am, I am. But you, but, you, but you brought, but you brought one. Uh, you brought it, Isaiah 9, 6, which says, refers to the everlasting Father. And we know that Jesus is not the everlasting right. Father. So maybe, maybe that one yeah. right, is debatable, okay? Even, right. even Emmanuel. Are you going, and, to, and are you he, going to, uh, No, no, because I'm, I'm talking about, you're using the Old Testament, but I'm saying the ones you brought from uh, Isaiah 7, 14, and he should be called Emmanuel. Can you tell me anywhere or anyone who called Jesus Emmanuel in his life? We just read it. No. It, the angel Gabriel. Even the verse, no, the verse says he will be called Emmanuel. So who called him Emmanuel? This is an announcement 
that this person is going to be called Emmanuel. If you read Isaiah uh, chapter 7, if you read the whole chapter, this is not talking about Jesus. This is talking about, some, this is talking about someone who was born at that time and who was born to a young lady and the child was called Emmanuel. So this is not talking about Jesus? No. But it just basically says Jesus. It's I, called Je I, Ma Jesus. Matthew says it's talking about Jesus. The unknown, the unknown author, Matthew, says it's talking about Jesus. But Matthew, Ma the tax collector? Yeah, but... Why is he unknown then? Because you cannot prove that Matthew wrote it. Yeah. i I, I give you another example. Uh, Can you prove that... Um, come, uh, come, come, come. Anyone wrote any book? I'll come to that. Matthew, if you go to Matthew chapter 2, verse 15. Uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, when it mentions the virgin birth, it mentions something which is not mentioned in any other Gospel. It mentions that when Jesus was born, they heard news that Herod had decided to kill the, the young boys born in Bethlehem from the children of Israel. So it mentions that Mary and Joseph took the baby to Egypt. Okay? And then it mentioned after the death of Herod in uh, Matthew 2.15, it mentions, and out of Egypt, I will call my son. And it mentions this is in order to, to fulfill a prophecy. Okay. When you go back to the Old Testament, is uh, Hosea chapter 11, verse 1 and down. Whoever wrote Hosea mentions that, that the children of Israel are called the son of God. And out of Israel, they were taken and they were saved from Pharaoh. So the verse in Hosea is not talking about someone going to be born in hundreds of years time. It's talking about the children of Israel that they were, and then it continues by saying in Hosea and then after I brought you out of, out of Egypt you began to worship false gods. So this verse is not talking about Jesus but Matthew has taken it and said it's talk, about talk, talking about Jesus. So this is quite common. Well yeah I mean some prophecies had double prophecies. According um, to who? That's, that's, sorry? But then you can, but if it can have double it can have triple and yeah, yeah, where do you stop potentially, it? Potentially. But, um, so you're there, using, you're using that, prophecies the, about Jesus which don't fit Jesus. Like Jesus was never called Emmanuel. Jesus is not, is not the everlasting father. And Jesus is not referred to in Hosea chapter, uh, chapter 11. It's like, um, it's like you throw the dart, it hit, or you, you fire the arrow, it hits the water, and then you draw the target after. It's like you, you come up with your belief and then you've brought evidence to support your belief you already have. Right. Hands are the best feet. So, look. I think, but well, it's not just that verse alone. It's the accumulation of all the verses yeah. that point towards Jesus Christ being God. And even though he didn't walk around saying, I'm God, worship ah. I'm yeah. God, I'm God, yeah, he showed himself to be God. By but, a, by but, he, but he walked around you know, saying, but he walked around saying there's only one God. Yeah. And he and yes. he had a God yes. and he yes. worshipped yes. that God. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. one of the verses that sort of sum up this idea because he did make claims that only God should should, should make. Uh -huh. I am the good shepherd, referring to old uh -huh. old testament um, narratives about God. Yeah. You know, the bread of life, uh -huh. I am the true vine. All, all these statements that he made uh, allude to the fact that he's claiming to be God. When he called himself the Son of Man, when he just before his um, crucifixion, yeah. allude, alluding to the um, statement made in Daniel prophecies uh -huh. you know he almost got um, stoned sorry that's what led to his con his condemnation at that point uh, made Caiaphas rip his clothes and said you don't need any more evidence uh -huh. but um, you know he, he he's cumulative claims yeah and the, and the things that he did to prove who he was yeah the miracles the raising of, of the dead uh, the healing of the sick so the, look, the, the look, but all, all, of, all of these things, the miracles, raising of the dead, Jesus told you that I cannot do this of my own power. I cannot do this of my, my own authority. It's been given to me. So the way Jesus yeah. is viewed by myself and, you know, I'm kind of and Christians, as a Christian, or right? generally Christians, yeah. Is, is, and I'm, by, by the way, I'm just yeah. a lay Christian, right? I'm not uh -huh. an expert in these matters, right? But uh -huh. this is my understanding, right? Yeah. Which we, I think we should all come to, uh, you know, have our own understanding of these things. Is that Jesus Christ is the example for mankind to follow, yeah? A bit like how you might say Muhammad is the, the example in Islam, yeah? To, to emulate, to follow. 
to but, but, to but, follow suit. Yeah? But sorry, that's that's a that's a problem there because when we say that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is an example to follow. We believe Jesus in his time was definitely an example to follow. We believe Moses was an example to follow. To be followed by humans. Humans, they followed them as examples on how to worship God, how to please God. But a human being can never follow God. So you were not called to follow God? To, yeah, but you're, to, saying, to Jesus, God's but you're saying Jesus is God. Yes. Yeah. 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 But, but you're saying you're not called to follow God? No. we're. We follow the messenger, we obey God, we worship God, we submit ourselves to God, we place our trust in God, we love God, we fear God, we place our hope in God, but we don't follow him. So we, we follow the messenger sent. This is, I think it's maybe another fundamental difference. Yeah. In so how do you follow Jesus? So or how do you follow, how do you follow God? Yeah, so God has certain characteristics, certain uh -huh. ways. Yeah. God is kind, God is generous, uh -huh. God is merciful. Yeah. Yeah. We can be like that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got like 99 names for God, right? Yeah. Can you emulate them, them characteristics? The Almighty. Yeah. The All Knowing. Uh, right, right. So maybe not Almighty, but can you emulate, you know, kindness, goodness? Do you believe that God can be given authority? Oh, hold on, hold on. Yeah. you change the subject. Yeah. I'll ask a question. No, it's still authority. the same subject. Yeah. Same subject. Oh, yeah. But yeah. I'll ask a direct yeah. question. Yeah. I mean, there are qualities about God that we can follow. Do you agree? Uh, being kind, being merciful, yeah, yeah. being loving. So that's, yes. that's how we can follow God. Yeah, uh -huh. And God's, like God's, as, uh -huh. as a parable I alluded, alluded to before, God said many prophets and the nations, of, of God's people kept on um, uh, disobeying him, falling away, uh, rebelling against him. Uh -huh. And in the last days, Jesus said like, he sent his son, his only son, surely they'll follow him. And he sent himself yeah. or he sent his son? Well, God somehow, yeah. The second entered, person of the Trinity came down. God and, somehow entered and died. his creation. Yeah. 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 Which is not totally and, unfeasible. And became and became, uh, and became human. And yeah? No, this is this is no, not. No, this, this, is this, not this, this is the Christian belief. This is not your yeah, belief. Yeah, I know, I know, but this, this is, is a Christian not, belief. But this is I know it's a Christian belief, but this is not the belief of Jesus. This is not the belief of Abraham, this is not the belief of Moses. That's, I'm that's not my saying, point. It's definitely not the belief yeah. of Abraham. This, it's definitely not the belief of Moses. Yeah. But it's, it's the belief of Jesus, I'd say. Can you demonstrate yeah. it? Well, I mean, like, I'm trying to. But it, yeah. it, it, the, the foundation of your belief should be very clear. Yeah. Well, it is, it's pretty clear, I'd say. Uh, yeah. There's definitely statements and, and acts that Jesus, Jesus... Jesus was given authority. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely statements and acts that Jesus done that cumulatively uh -huh. allude to him being God uh -huh. in the flesh, but not with the power of God. Not with the all-knowing, omnipotence of God, the omniscience of God, but definitely with the unbenevolence of God. Okay, this is the book of Acts. You, you mentioned, I mean, not the book of Acts, but you mentioned the Acts of Jesus. So Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know so in this verse it's calling the children of Israel and it's describing Jesus of Nazareth a man approved of by God among and he was approved of by God and he performed miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you here it's not saying Jesus is God. Right, right. Yeah. Go, go to Hebrews chapter 1. Okay. See what it says. It's, it's along the same lines. But the, the thing is, look. Go, you, go to Hebrews chapter 1 and okay. it'll answer your question. Let's finish with this verse. Is, is this saying that Jesus is God? Or is it saying that he's a man of. He's, he's a, a man, man approved by God. Uh, yes, yeah, so yeah. therefore he's not God. Go to Hebrews chapter 1. Okay. Hebrews chapter 1. Yeah. Uh, so chapter 1, what verse? Uh, just read that, it's not too far. God who at sundry times... The problem is I only have KJV on here. God who at sundry times... Uh, I've got a Bible in my bag. Oh, okay, no problem. So here in Hebrews... Hebrews, do you know the author? No. Hebrews. In what way? If you're saying that only Muhammad said that Jibreel, that the angel Gabriel gave it to him, and you think that's problematic. If you have a book in your Bible, who no one knows he wrote it, isn't that problematic? 
it's problematic, yeah, but it's been approved by the church fathers. And who gave them authority? The apostles. How do you know that? We've got letters written by the, the first Christians. And they, and they gave authority to the church? Well, they, they validated the scriptures, the canon. No, no. I know that's a separate issue, but the canon was, was validated much later. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of, of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all th things by his powerful word. After he had provided purifications for sins, he sat down at the right hand of, of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much as superior to the angels as the name he has inherited superior to theirs. But to which oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Look, there's a number of points here that show that Jesus is not God. He, 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 he hold on, hold on, hold on. let me just yeah. get to my point, yeah? yeah. But there's so many points here that show that Jesus is not God. Oh, hold on, hold he on. became as much superior to the angels. He became superior to the angels. So Jesus wasn't superior to the angels previously. God is always superior. God is always superior to everything. Okay. Yeah, sorry, you, you're up to here. The sun yeah. superior to the angels. Let's just find the verse. Even in, in the, uh, the epistles and, and the letters of Paul, there's a very clear distinction between Jesus and God. I see, sorry, it's chapter 2. Yeah. We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. For since the message spoken through angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore so, so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to it by signs, wonders and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. So, in answer to your uh, Acts yeah. verse, right? Yeah. This is why I brought this up. I thought it was chapter 1, but it's chapter 2. No problem. Yeah. God demonstrated the value validity of Jesus' message. You've done that again. God demonstrated the Jesus' message. Yes. So you're, you're separating between God and Jesus. Yeah, well, I've never said there's not a separation. We're we saying that there are no, three. No, there, there should be a separation between the Father and God, but not God and Jesus. If Jesus is fully God, how do you separate them? So, in his human nature, yeah. Yeah, Jesus Christ did not claim to be God. Uh -huh. yeah? Yeah. And this is what the Bible teaches. So there was times when he wasn't God and there's times when he was God. No, it's not like you, that. you believe he was fully God and fully man at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So whenever you say he's man, you have to believe he was fully God. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah. So when he said But, but you see but yeah. you see yeah. Christ came and and gave up his rights as God, so to speak. Uh -huh. He gave up his authority as God in terms of um, so you, you don't believe you don't believe that God is eternal in so, his in his in his might and majesty. No, I, I do believe that. Yeah. So how can he give it up? So at that time yeah, he so, that so, when, so, so when he gave up his attributes of God, he, he was no longer God. Well, he made himself. It's a bit like a, a boss owning a company. You, know, you see these programs where the boss becomes one of the workers. Yeah. He, he's the boss, yeah. but he's, he's doing all the work amongst the workers. No, no, but my point is that is God, like. can God give up his authority? Uh, he seems he can. Yeah. Uh, and still That's remain being, being God? Yeah, it seems like he so, can. So yeah. God, according to you, you have to say that, but when you believe that God is eternal in his names and attributes, he should always be the almighty, he should always be the all-knowing. See, but we, yeah. we do have that. So, 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 when, so you're saying that when, when God gave up his uh, authority and his power as being God, then you can't say that you believe Jesus on earth was fully God and fully man, because he's given it up. Well, I think he's, um, he's even though he's God, he gave it up, yeah? So yeah. he is God, but he's just not exercising his authority as God, it seems. 
Well, like I say, it's but not how, an easy how, concept. How can he be God if he's giving it up? So this, this is the verse. Because we believe God is eternal. Yeah. So it says, in your relationships yeah. with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, yeah. did not consider equality with God yeah. something to be used in his own advantage. Yeah. Rather, he made himself nothing, uh -huh. taking the very nature of a servant, uh -huh. being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and, became, and becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place. Who, exa gave, who exalted him? God exalted him to the highest place. God exalted who? Jesus Christ. God exalted God to the highest place. Yes. yes. God exalted Jesus Christ, the Son God, of God. God exalted God to the highest place. Yes. See, for us that can never work because one, it's contrary to the revelation of the Quran. It's contrary to the own words of Jesus, which I mentioned to you, that this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ who you sent. Jesus said of my, of my own self, I can do nothing. But when you say that God gave up his authority or gave up his power, then he's no longer God. Yeah. Well, it's a bit like the analogy that I was given earlier, where yeah. the boss of the company yeah. Yeah, goes in as one of the workers and just, make, you know, these programs where they just see what the workers are like or they see how the company uh, runs on the, on the floor service. Yeah. It's a bit like that. I believe that God... Why, why would God do that? Because that's uh, a great question. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's a fantastic question, uh -huh. and that's yeah. a six million dollar question. Uh -huh. right? Why wouldn't God do that? If, for instance, you as a king yeah. was running around in your stately clothes, yeah. Yeah? and you saw your son drowning in the river, yeah. Yeah? would you not jump off into the river, even though you've got all your stately clothes on there, forget about your dignity and, and save your son? Of course. Yeah. Why would God do that then? Because he's all loving. What, what's your point? I, I, I don't understand. Are you saying that that's... Are you saying... I don't understand your example. How does that apply to God? God would do anything to uh -huh. save his, his children. And how, how does he save them? By, yeah, become, by becoming a man and God... And entering that, his creation. Uh, and dying on a cross. And, and saving us from our sins. Teaching us, showing us the way. Yeah? Uh -huh. Showing us the way. God, God, saves, us us, the way. God has saves us by dying. Yeah. So God saved us by paying the price for our sins. And who do we sin against? We sin against God, we sin against each other. Okay, you're saying that God... So the money was owed to God, the or, the, or the, the price was owed to, owed to God, and God paid it. Yeah. Why didn't he just forgive it? Because there has to be justice. Where's the justice in someone else taking the sins of other people? It's a bit like... An, um, an, an innocent person. An innocent person carried the sins of others. You're saying that Jesus took the sins who was innocent. Is that justice? And, and see, see, the thing is, look. Well, it's, it's, Jesus, right, Jesus, uh, Jesus, Jesus, according to you, he died once. Okay. He died on the cross. And, and he knew and he was told, because he's God already, that after three days, he's going to come back to life. So he already knows he's going to come back to life, be given glory, uh, returned and sit on the right hand side of the Father. He knows this for three days. How is that paying for all the sins of mankind? If mankind has committed multiple murders, lying, cheating, rape, genocide, is it equal? Because you said you said you said it has to you said it has to be you said it has to be paid. Yeah. So yeah. let me answer your yeah. couple of questions there. Yeah, say, right? But if it's paid, it should be. If, if you're saying if you're saying justice says it has to be paid, it should be equal, shouldn't it? So how is it just? Like for example, I owe you a thousand pounds and I, and I give you one pound. Is, have I paid back the debt? No. no, no. Okay. So Jesus Christ being sinless. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go soon. I'm going to go and pray. So you, I'll let you make the last point. Jesus Christ being sinless. Jesus yeah. is the only one that can pay the sins because all of us, because we're sinful, yeah. are unable to pay the price for anyone else's sins. So Jesus Christ being brutally tortured, betrayed, abandoned, uh -huh. um, separated from the Spirit of God. Uh -huh. um, so he wasn't God when he was separated from the Spirit of God? No, he was still God. Yeah. Was so how is, how is he separated from, from the Spirit himself? of God? Okay. Uh -huh. That doesn't make any sense. Well, Perhaps it doesn't, but this is what the Bible teaches you. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, separated from God. Yeah. yeah. 
uh, and um, killed yeah, the most uh, one of the most horrific ways. Yeah. So you're saying an innocent, Humiliated. an innocent yeah. person, yeah. an innocent person bore the sins of mankind. Yes. Okay. But doesn't that go against the Bible? No, because he offered himself uh -huh. to do that. He didn't offer himself. So he he he, uh, he prayed. For this cup to be taken away from him, and then he prayed some more. Yeah, and he said, "Right, come, let's go." Yeah, yeah. but he, he, but he only submitted to the will of God. Therefore, he was He prayed to God for the cup to be taken away from him, and then he said, "Not as my will, but your will." So the the will of God overpowered the will of Jesus, and Jesus, except, according to your narrative, he accepted the will of God. So this is this is a this is someone who worships God. It's not God. So yeah. So. As I said before, yeah. he emptied himself of all his power, uh -huh. all his knowledge. So he wasn't yes. God then? So, hold on. He emptied himself yeah, willingly, yes. uh -huh. all his power, knowledge, and... Um, so he wasn't God then? And these attributes of God. So yeah. he wasn't God then? No, I'm not... So why are you uh -huh. putting words into my mouth? No, I'm just telling you. I'm not, I'm not putting words in I'm telling you that if something doesn't have the attributes of God, it's not God. It's, it's quite simple. So that's your... That's your that's what you I think, yeah, but uh, we're led to believe that even though he didn't have the knowledge, the power, uh, and he willingly came in his human flesh, as we read in that verse, yeah, yeah. Um, that he was he's still God, yeah, but he's not holding onto them powers as a man. So he, he do, he's not, so he doesn't have the attributes of God. Yeah, in that instance, he doesn't yeah. have them attributes of God. He still has benevolence, yeah, he's all benevolence, yeah, omni benevolence. Uh -huh. yeah. He's still, um, has certain powers to obviously uh -huh. heal, to raise up the dead, that sort of stuff. He said of my own self I can do nothing. Yeah. Is, is yeah. the power given to him by God? Yeah, yeah. So, There's a very clear distinction between the creator and creation. The all knowing and the yeah, yeah. Islamist, but in Christianity, uh -huh. yeah, we have a God that enters his creation for yeah. what reason is what you yeah. said earlier. Uh -huh. yeah? To save his people. Yeah. But this is but and this, this is, is the, this is the heart is, of God in the this, old. Hold on, hold on. Let me finish later, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is the heart of God uh -huh. throughout the whole Bible. Yeah, from day one. But you haven't shown me anywhere in the this, Bible this. this. What? So yeah. did God enter the cre his creation in the Old Testament? No. What about when he's walking in the Garden of Eden? But the thing what about is, when, okay. what about in the burning bush? It's okay. even in the Quran. Okay, the thing is that. So hold on, hold on. Did God enter his creation? I'm going to come to this. When you quote the, the Old Testament, how do you know it's from God? So you're changing the subject. Uh -huh. you're changing the subject. Uh -huh. Did God enter no. his creation? No, no. God is completely so, separate so from his we're creation. We're checking out the Old Testament now. Right? No, we're not checking out the Old Testament. But I'm saying when you so call, when he says when yeah. he's in the garden walking around, or yeah. when he's in the burning bush, yeah. is he not in his creation? Okay. So according to Genesis, he was walking around in the garden. Okay. So now you're going to have to say who wrote Genesis and how do you know that the Genesis... So you don't believe Genesis? I believe the, the first five books of the Bible. Which is Genesis, then? Genesis, Exodus, uh, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. I believe these were all written after Moses and we don't have the originals and the earliest copies we have is over a thousand years after they were written. I mean, this is what biblical oh, scholars oh, oh, say, yeah. Do you believe in Genesis? No. So you don't believe in Genesis? Then? No. You I just said you believe in the first five books. No, I just told you, I believe the first five books were written after Moses. They were not written by Moses. You answer the question. Yeah. No. So I'm, I'm telling you, the first five books, they cannot be traced back to Moses. The first five books do not tell you that Moses wrote them. I'm asking you, yeah. do you believe in Genesis? No. So you don't believe in the first five books then? I, I, what do you mean? Do I believe they're from revelation from God given to Moses? No. So, so when you say yeah, you believe yeah. in the first five books, yeah. you don't believe in the first five books? Yeah. I'm going to go now to the mosque. Uh, we're here still, if you can excuse me. I'm going as well. No problem. All right, All right. thanks a lot. What's your name again? You, sir. Your name? Scott. Scott. Nice All to right. talk to you. Thank you.